Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be an action and thriller movie from 2018 called The Commuter. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. Every day, Michael McCauley follows the same routine. He spends time with his wife Karen and son Danny, helping Danny with his literature homework before Karen drives him to work. Karen drops him off at the train station, a ritual they've repeated for 10 years. Michael, who sells life insurance, chats with other regulars during his commute. One day, Michael's boss tells him he's been laid off after 10 years of service. Despite his pleas about having two mortgages, a college-bound son, and only five years left until retirement, he's let go. Everything feels unreal as he and Karen are barely making ends meet. Later, Karen calls to discuss upcoming bills, but Michael doesn't tell her he lost his job. He goes to a bar and meets his old friend, Officer Alex Murphy, a former detective partner. They watch a news report about a city planner's alleged suicide. Michael confides in Alex that he has yet to tell Karen about his job loss. They also learn that an unpopular former colleague, Dave Hawthorne, has become a captain. Alex and Michael reflect on the dangers of trying to be noble. At the station, amidst a security check, Michael notices a man hesitating on the phone. Another commuter bumps into him, and Michael realizes his phone is missing. He overhears people talking about something big happening tonight. On the train, Michael sits next to a woman named Joanna. After a friendly chat, she reveals that there's a hidden compartment on the train holding $100,000. She offers him the money if he can identify an out-of-place passenger carrying a stolen bag and going by the name Print. Print. She hints that she knows about his past as a cop and tells him to keep this secret. Shocked, Michael checks the compartment and finds the money. A young woman tries to claim it, but Michael decides to keep it. She gives him an envelope containing Karen's wedding ring as a warning. Michael borrows a phone to call for help, but can't reach anyone. He writes a note to another commuter, Walton, to contact the police as his family might be in danger. As Walton leaves the train, someone working with Joanna is pushed in front of a bus, killing him. Joanna warns Michael that he could meet the same fate if he tries to escape. She instructs him to track a bag with a device they've slipped into his pocket. Michael returns the borrowed phone and starts identifying potential suspects among the passengers. He confronts a stockbroker who's new on the train and accuses him of being the person they're looking for. The stockbroker dismisses him and Michael moves on to a girl carrying fake IDs. He then points out a few suspicious passengers to a conductor. A confrontation starts when he follows a tattooed man who attacks him for his persistence. When Mike mentions Prin, the man becomes suspicious and their fight continues. Mike lets him win so he can secretly place a tracking device on him. After completing this, Mike takes a moment to catch his breath. Suddenly, Tony gets a call, which turns out to be from Alex. Alex informs Mike that he sent agents to check on his family. Mike shares everything about Prin, the $100,000, and how Walt was involved, adding that his family is under threat. Alex reveals that a witness using Prin's name saw men pushing a city official to his death, making Mike realize that Prin is likely targeted for murder and he's been framed. As the train enters a tunnel, the call cuts off. Agents await the witness at Cold Springs, noting their 20 minutes from arrival. As Mike walks through the train cars, people look at him nervously. He opens a bag belonging to the tattooed man in an empty car, finding personal items and a missing gun. Then, a phone rings. It's Joanna on the line. She blames Mike for misidentifying someone and causing another death. When Mike asks about his family, Joanna reassures him they'll be fine if he follows her instructions. Suddenly, Joanna lets Mike listen in on a conversation at his house through Karen's phone, where a man claims he's visiting on Mike's behalf. Joanna cuts the transmission, warning Mike not to leave the train or get caught. The train stops for an investigation, prompted by passengers reporting Mike's suspicious behavior. He hides with the body while police inspect the cars. Unable to open the doors, Mike crawls underneath and jumps back on as the train starts moving, though his bag gets stuck and spills money, leaving only $100. Joanna calls again, indicating two more stops until Cold Springs. Desperate, Mike turns off the air conditioning in all cars except the last one, causing passengers to move there. He joins a card game with a man in a red shirt and Tony, questioning the red shirt's presence and loudly sharing his own story of being fired and not daring to tell his wife. He then describes a hypothetical situation about a passenger with a suspicious bag, echoing Joanna's earlier story. 
Tony asks if Mike would take the money, and Mike admits he already has. He suspects five commuters might be Prin, whom he's never seen before. Realizing that a man playing cards with Tony is a regular, Mike follows another man, a guitarist named Oliver, to an empty car. Oliver is not Prin, but an assassin sent by Joanna. After a struggle, Mike manages to throw Oliver out of a broken window. Joanna instructs Mike to take a gun, implying he must choose between saving Prin or his family. As they approach Cold Springs, the man in the fancy suit exits early, narrowing down the suspects. Mike crosses off the girl with the colorful hair and sits across from Eva, a Hispanic woman who's been receiving texts. He confronts her at gunpoint, believing she's in contact with Joanna. Terrified, Eva confesses she had a fight with her boyfriend and was trying to reconcile. Mike apologizes, realizing she's not involved. Gradually, Mike figures out that Prin isn't any of the people he suspected. He recalls a young woman who changed seats earlier due to an annoying passenger approaching her, but she's lost in her music. The girl's name is Sophia, and she got the name Prin from the protagonist Hester Prin in The Scarlet Letter. Joanna calls Mike again, but he refuses to harm Sophia or betray her. Joanna warns him that she works for very powerful people, and because he won't cooperate, everyone's life is at risk now. Mike tells one of the conductors, Sam, to stop the train to save themselves. Sam tries to pull the brake, but it explodes and the train speeds on, passing two FBI agents at Cold Springs. The engineer is dead and there's no stopping the train. They attempt to detach their car from the rest and with Sam's help, Mike manages to partially free the car, though it's still linked by a chain. Sam grabs an axe and they both try to sever the chain as the train starts to derail. They finally release the chain. Mike is thrown into the last car while Sam remains in the crashing cars. Red Shirt pulls Mike to safety as their car derails and stops abruptly at the edge of a train yard. Amid the chaos, Mike fires his gun to get everyone's attention. He instructs them to spray the windows with water using newspapers to cover them. Mike then asks Sophia about anything she might have that the villains could want. She reveals a flash drive containing important information, explaining that a city planner who was her friend had this data. She also shares that she couldn't go to the police because the killers were police officers. She saw one of them who spoke about being noble. She mentions that she had only told Agent Garcia about this. Outside, the police think Mike has taken the passengers hostage. His former colleague, Dave, using a loudspeaker, urges him to surrender. Meanwhile, Alex arrives and tries to calm the situation. Mike organizes a group of passengers to leave safely, leaving a few behind. After dealing with a wire, Dave instructs him to watch a person tagged with blue on the train. Mike presses Alex for information about the conspiracy, recalling the phrase about nobility that Sophie had mentioned earlier, hinting at Alex's involvement. Alex initially denies it, but eventually admits he set Mike up, believing Mike needed the money. He advises Mike to surrender to see his family again. Resigning to his fate, Mike hands over his gun. Alex reminds Mike about his family worries. Just as Sophia is about to reveal herself, other passengers claim they are Prin to protect her. Mike and Alex then struggle, and when Alex pulls a gun, Dave orders snipers to fire, resulting in Alex's death as SWAT teams move in. Agent Garcia confirms Mike's family is safe and that three men have been arrested outside his home. Sophia gives her statement to the FBI, and the passengers view Mike as a hero. Reunited with his family, Mike returns his wife's ring and speaks to Dave, who mentions investigating Alex and his accomplices further and suggests Mike could return to detective work. Later, Mike is back on the train and spots Joanna, who acts like she doesn't recognize him. He suspects she orchestrated his firing and positioned Sophia on the train for a reason, believing she manipulated both him and Alex. When she asks him about the outcome, Mike simply shows his detective badge. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.